You're listening to the Kennel Confidential Podcast brought to you by the United Tree and Feist Association. I'm your host, Davin Ramage. I'm your co-host, Chad Wagner. Let's get into the episode. All right, let's jump into episode number five of the Kennel Confidential Podcast. I've got Chad on the phone, of course. And uh, in this episode, we're going to talk to a couple ladies um, and just get their perspective as women in the squirrel dog, both on the pleasure side and competition side. Both ladies are uh, known to do both. Uh, they show dogs, train dogs, hunt dogs, you name it, they're in it. They are tree and feist ladies. Um, and to kick it off, we are going to start with Joni Moore from Texas and get to know her a little bit, ask her a few questions about the dogs and just see what we can learn. Chad, Joni, you there? I'm here. I'm here. Hello, Miss Joni. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are y'all? Uh, doing good. Joni, I was listening to another podcast the other day, and it was some Texas people talking. And I don't know how long ago it was recorded, but are y'all still on a heat streak? So many days over 100 degrees or something? No, it's actually cooled off, and we got rain the last two days. So you, did it make the squirrels move? Did you get out? No, I did not. There were still <laughs> probably snakes out there. Well, that is true. <laughs> that is true. Well, before we jump into the dogs too, too much, uh, as usual, we always like to figure out who we're talking to. So, Joni, introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from and what you do when you're not fooling with dogs. Joni Moore from Little Town, Beckville, Texas, um, right here in East Texas. Office manager, um, my, I just basically go to work, come home, work with dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I know that pain, but I got to throw kids in there too. Well, I have my grandbabies that they help me. They probably help you with the dogs too, don't they? Occasionally. <laughs> and and Joni makes tumblers and cups and oh, that uh, is true. I got a lot of different stuff. And she's dabbling with plaques now, I think. Yeah, I just I'm I try to be crafty. Yeah, well, Miss Joni, how long have you been hunting dogs? Oh, me personally, only the last couple of years. We had a feist. Our son had feist probably twenty two years ago, and he lived to be about fourteen years old. My son hunted him with. If he was hunting rabbits, the dog was hunting rabbits. If he was hunting squirrels, he was the dog was finding squirrels. If he was hunting coons, the dog was hunting coons. He just he was just an all around good dog. He's super protective over all the kids. Um, he chased down a pig. It didn't matter what it was. He was getting after it. And a few years back, our son got him another one, and that made. My husband and I, Jeff, wanted to get back into it, so he got one, and then I got one, and just went from there. Well, that kind of leads us into the the next question. When you decided to get back in it all the years later, with all the other options out there, what was it that piqued your interest about the tree and feist? Well, honestly, at at first, I was like the. The feist we had, I don't know what he was. He wasn't registered. He was just a feist. Um, you know, we, um, I didn't, I guess at the time when we, when we decided we wanted one, we didn't realize, hey, there's a big difference. <laughs> so, um, we're just digging into it and looking at puppies and talking to people and reading articles and just doing all our research we was trying to do, we were figuring out the differences. Um, and I like I like both. I like tree and fast. I like mountain fast. It doesn't matter to me. Well, how did you choose your first pup? I, mean, I know you did some research, but what, what keyed you in on your first one? Well, honestly, we just went to a guy here locally, and um, it's where my son had gotten his from. And picked one out. I mean, at the time, we were just kind of looking at their body, at their structure, at their build, and kind of personality-wise to see how how they acted, you know. The first two we got was Ellie and Blue. Of course, you know Ellie. 
Yeah, I was going to ask if baby. the <laughs> first one was tricolor, because if you know Joni and Jeff, you know that tricolor is their thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, blue was the first one, and he is a fawn color. Have you ever hunted anything else? No, up I have or not. Well, I haven't necessarily hunted anything else myself. I did get to go with my dad here a while back and run his hog dogs. So, What kind of dogs are those? Let's see. His catch dog is a part bulldog, and I'm not sure what else is in TJ. And he's got some hound and Airedale in his bay dogs. I'm interested in watching a hog dog work. That'd be pretty neat. And you also have a couple of mountain fights, don't you, Joni? We do. My daughter has a, a female, and I have a male. You pleasure and competition hunt? Is you do both? I do. I'm not very good at the shooting part, but I, I try. <laughs> so not very good at the shooting part. So if they'll be still, I can hit them. If they're not being still, I'm not very good at it. So does Jeff do all the shooting then? Uh yeah. If he if he's going, he carries the gun. I just handle the dog. I got you. I think that's perfect in every scenario. That's my favorite part is the dog. As a side note, we did ask Todd Coles, you know, we were talking about the debate between shotgun and twenty two. So what do what's Jeff packing when he goes? He Four ten. <laughs> <laughs> he, he will he will carry a four ten around here, but he figured out that that's not the way to go up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I guess is the timber taller here? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I can't find four ten shells up here. I hope he brings plenty when he comes. Well, I think the, when he comes back, when we come back in October, he's bringing the 20 gauge anyway. That's what I like to take. I we was, went hunting one day and Jeff went with us and he liked to never heard the end of it. He brought that 410 and we stayed on him the whole time we were hunting. <laughs> oh, and about him not using his shells too. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that too. I, was, I took a 20 gauge uh, last year and I got in some timber in LBL that was maybe I wasn't packing the right shot. I normally shoot six shot. I probably took four shots at that squirrel and I don't think I was missing. Uh, my 20 gauge was just struggling to get the shot up there. I think it. I got so irritated. I said, tomorrow I'm bringing my 22. I wasn't fooling with that 20 gauge anymore. So of of all the dogs you have, how many dogs do you have? You've got a pretty good size pack, don't you? I have 11 dogs here at my house right now. All squirrel dogs? Two. No, one of them is a men pen rescue dog that my daughter has. He's been here the longest. So of the squirrel dogs you have, how many of them are competition caliber dogs? Oh, I don't know that any of them are yet. (laughs) Well, how many do you pack when you travel? Uh, That just depends on the last time we carried two because we had females in heat. My plan is to work with Psycho pretty hard this year. Work on getting her Psycho to hunt closer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, well, I guess me and you and Psycho went, I don't know, it was probably two or three times that weekend. And man, that dog gets out there. That's one thing. She's probably the farthest hunting fights I've seen in a little bit that I've been in it. I'll say that. Yeah, and that, she's not scared to go. That first afternoon, she... Uh, The hunt was over, and she was treed. I forgot how far me and you walked. It felt like forever, but she was not coming off the tree. We had to go out there and get her and leash her. Yeah, she. I I guess they had went in a hole at the bottom of the tree. She was trying to get in there with it. Yeah, that's right. If you're pushing Psycho more than is she, and I know you, Joni, you may have a hard time answering this, but would you consider her the best? Is she your favorite dog to pack to a competition? Um, I won't tell any of them. I won't tell Smokey. I won't tell any of them if you say she's a favorite. Um, she between her, yeah, probably as competition wise, yeah, I think she's going to be a little better at the competition. And Joni, are you a are you a member of any clubs or organizations? Just UTFA. We have a. East Texas squirrel hunters here. I joined. I haven't went to any of the hunts, but I joined. Is there any advantage in your eyes to joining a club or an organization? I feel like competition-wise, if there is something you don't like, then that club or organization can be your voice to the registry that you're hunting in. It's kind of hard if you 
just to, as an individual decide you don't like this or think this needs to be changed maybe you just should talk to a board member and um see if they can't make that happen you know see if it see if it isn't other people that feel that way too and everybody collectively get together to make changes that need to be changed that, to, that need to be made also it gets you out there like here trying to train these dogs and start off i was just lost you know i didn't have a clue and i'm just learning all kinds of things every time we go to a hunt or every time we go and join a new or you know talk to a new club somewhere else then you know i'm learning different things from different people about these dogs and different techniques and i just feel like it, it knowledge is power so if you you know the more you can learn about it the better off you are yeah that makes a big difference i think going to a club but now you do bench and hunt which one do you like the best mm, i don't know i i love to show but once you get so far with that you're kind of stuck you can't you know once you grand a dog in the show you're you're pretty much done except for the you know maybe winning your big you know bigger shows but you can always hunt well on the show you can also and i know in ukc anyways you can keep showing and and go for hall of fame in the show oh they i didn't know they had that i'm gonna have to do that <laughs> <laughs> got all new motivation now you know and talking about joining the club you know being able to pick people's brain and that sort of thing so when i went hanging around the uh, tree and fight stays last year which is where i believe that's when i met you Joni. i think that was the first time i was hanging around uh anyway i just kind of i'd never seen a show at all and i was just kind of kicked back watching the show and i think it was the next morning or something when we were drinking coffee waiting to draw dogs out i started picking your brain because i watched Smokey up there standing as pretty as he was and you know i started picking your brain and then you said oh well you need to go talk to mr barnes or leroy and i'm was sitting there thinking well i just watched you showed a dog i think i'm talking to the right person you did a pretty good job <laughs> but but you know that does just kind of go to your point about the advantage of a club is it, you know just being able to pick and pull at people um, which i still ask you questions i think this past weekend i asked you a question about my dog's foot and you said the same thing well go talk to mr barnes <laughs> but, but i've got all the faith in your answers Joni. <laughs> I, well, I know that I watch my dog. I, well, I can't watch my dog like y'all can, but I, I see what some of the things my dog's doing, and I get frustrated, and I just want him to stand up there like Burley. <laughs> yeah, I think a, a lot of us want him to stand up there like Burley. <laughs> <laughs> well, in your experience um, since getting into the, the club dog world, how do you feel like the reception as a lady coming into the sport, how do you feel like the reception was there? Oh, I feel like it was great. Like I honestly, I don't want to walk into the room and be stared at. So <laughs> whenever we first came up there, I had been talking to Chad on the phone and through messages and stuff about coming up there and, he said, okay, you know, just be here at this time. But I had no idea what to expect when I come in. So I made Jeff go in first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good for Jeff. That way, if they threw anything at you, it hit him first. <laughs> well, um, Jay and Sharon, or I don't think Jay was there, but Sharon was there. And um, I think Doug actually had had been there. And then... Right after we got in there and sat down and was talking, um, Cody come in and everybody was just very welcoming and talking to us. And I had no clue what to expect on the competition. And I don't know how I let Chad talk me into showing Ellie, but <laughs> I did. And then you got hooked. Yep. It wasn't too bad of an idea, was it? It, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was a good idea, but I was, I don't know if you could tell how nervous I was. I was probably about to shake Ellie off the bench. <laughs> and that's something we... I figured the only person that was nervous was Jeff paying for everything. <laughs> He's used to it. <laughs> 
That was something we should have hit on on earlier, though. Um, but since you bring it up, which dogs are titled out the best in your pack? Ellie needs one more win, I think, for Grand Smoke in the show. Smokey got Grand, and Psycho has a couple of wins in the show. I don't really know where she's at. I'll have to look. I think Ellie, Psycho, and Smokey each have maybe a win in the hunt. You know, a cast win or something, but I'd have to look. And you got Groot coming along now. Yeah, he. I think he's going to do really good. I just need to. This this last weekend was his first time away from the house that far. His first time, you know, actually going out on a hunt like that. We took him around here with some people, but I think he'll get there. Now, now staying in with the hunts, have you ever had? Any negative interactions when you were at a hunt? I haven't. I've always had, you know, I've, I've never had anybody arguing. I've, you know, if I'm judging, I try to be fair. And I, if I don't know, I'll turn, I'll read the rule. I, I've never seen any fighting or arguing going on at any of the ones that I have been to. I will attest that, that you do a very fair job of judging. Um, and me and George uh, Crawford went into that hunt off, and we were all, you know, kind of putting our heads together, figuring out the steps. <laughs> and he ended up beating me, but <laughs> but uh, you know, I, you you were very fair the whole time. I think you judged me. Yeah, you did. You judged. We hunted against each other every hunt that weekend. Um, you know, and that's one thing I called and told you that after it was all over too. You know, I really felt like you did a a good fair job. I hope you do stick with it. I think that a judge of your caliber is good for the sport, I think. Well, I plan on it. If I was going to if I felt like I was ever unfair to anybody's dog, I feel like I would want to be unfair to mine versus someone else's. <laughs> well, and just as long as you're beating Jeff when you're at home, just keep keep tally of that. That's too. right. That's right. <laughs> you know, Joni, you said that and uh I know any time I've judged, and I've talked to a lot of people that do judge, and I think any time that you are a hunting judge and your dog is on the ground, I, I think that the the judge's dog probably is more, you know, looked at and and everything than anybody else's dog because one, you want to be fair to everybody else, and and I think two that you almost have to set the standard so i think you you do end up being harder on your own dog when you judge right well i feel like if i let if i'm gonna let my dog break a rule and get away with it you know or or me break a rule and get away with it then i have to let everybody so <laughs> just right. stick with the rules and you know and play out. <laughs> i when i talk to um just non-dog hunting buddies of mine you know that's one thing and I d didn't understand either, you know, until you get out there and do it. Um, it's like going to a hockey game. It doesn't make sense until you watch it in person. And then it just barely makes sense then. But, you know, once you get out and you experience it and you – even if you're not competing in a hunt, if you're just spectating watching a hunt, um, it, it all makes a lot more sense then. But I guess what I'm getting at is I've had a lot of people, you know, non-dog hunting people ask me, well, wait a minute, you're hunting against your judge? <laughs> you know, I guess they, they, it immediately, it sounds as if, uh, uh, there'd be some kind of cheating or collusion or some sort going on. Um, but you know, in, in this sport, it's, it's just another weekend. <laughs> right, right. And as long as you got the right people hanging around your club and, and judging your cast, I, I learned real quick. I have no problem with it. I haven't, I haven't seen anything come out of a judge on a cast either that I just thought was absolutely sideways you know well i know that if everybody has told me know the rules know the rules and i i'm a hands-on person so i can read those rules i don't know how many times i've read them and until i put it into play out there it, I don't remember it until I have to, you know, right. until there's some situation for me to remember that particular rule by. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I always tell people when they first start that uh, the first thing you need to know is your dog. 
The second thing you need to know is the rules. And then the third thing you need to do is go to a few hunts and pay your dues. And And I know that kind of sounds negative, but if, if you can read those rules, know those rules, but you got to know how to apply those rules and when they, you know, they come into effect. And and I had a guy one time told me he's, he was kindly irritated. He said, well, I've never seen a new person win one of these hunts. I said, I've never seen a new guy win a, com- or a Monopoly game either <laughs> because there there is a strategy and, and there is, like you said, implementing the rules and, and figuring, you know, those those rules out. So, um, you know, just like you said, you had to go to a few hunts to see how it all worked. Yeah, when I got into playing poker in my younger days, there was a, a buddy of mine. They were always playing poker over at his house, and I'd go sit and watch and hang out and wish that I could understand it. And one of the guys there asked me one night, how come you keep hanging around and you never play? I said, man, I don't know how to play this. I'm not going to throw my money out there and lose it. And he said, the best way to figure out how to play it is to lose it. <laughs> and so I took him up the next weekend. I started losing money, and I learned poker pretty quick after that. <laughs> well, Joni, if there was – any one thing that if there was a lady out there on the fence and and i definitely hope there's plenty of them listening but if there was a lady out there on the fence about getting involved and jumping into the sport uh, even on the pleasure side uh, but you know more so on the competition side so you know they may feel the same as you i don't want to walk in and everybody stare at me what would that what would the piece of advice be that you could give them to get them off the fence and just tell them to go just do it i mean just do it. They, that's that's what I did. Um, oh, well, I sent my husband in first. Send your husband in first. <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, I mean, no. If it's something, there is so much knowledge out there, especially when you get around these guys as a, that has been around these dogs for a long time and working with these dogs for a long time. It doesn't have to be competition wise. It can just be about dogs um, and about hunting your dog or well hunting in general. And um, just go talk to them. If you, if, you know, call me, let me know you're coming. I'll meet you there. <laughs> you <laughs> All know, right. I mean, there's the I, invitation. I think, um, yeah, I mean, I, I I would encourage anybody that, you know, wants to come. If you're nervous about it, you know, let me know. I'll come out there. I'll meet you. We'll go in together. Yeah, and, um, you know, that's one thing that it impresses me. You know, I will I'll attest to Joni and Jeff. They do travel, uh, and that's one thing that floors me. I guess I've just been in West Kentucky. I've always been – spoiled you know to we have just about everything that you want to hunt um except hogs and bears that you know those guys would be pretty bored here in west kentucky but but the amount of traveling in the competition world you know we've got we're going to talk to anna she comes down from new york you know last year three and five days there was michigan uh north carolina texas you know you and jeff traveling and again i guess i've been spoiled but it just seems like Man, you drive past a lot of squirrels to get there. <laughs> but we love having I mean, I'm glad you come, but it was just um it's just always amazing to me how much travel there is and the you know, we got together last weekend. It wasn't the full club, but it was still good to see everybody and you just kinda of feel like you pick up where you left off, you know. Right. Well, here, um I think here we have a shorter season than a lot of places. You know, I guess our weather. <laughs> A lot of people, a lot of people pleasure hunt around here, but I don't know that many competition hunters around here. Um, and I, we don't have that many here, you know, locally that I know of. Um, you know, so if you want to do that, then that's something you're going to have to travel to do. And um, we went to Kentucky and Harden and who can come to Harden and not like it? <laughs> <laughs> and so the first time you came, did you come up blind? I mean, you talked to Chad a little bit, you said, but aside from that, did you just, is that the first time you've been to Harden and LBL in West Kentucky? Did you just kind of send Jeff oh, in yeah. there blind? <laughs> yes. I had no clue. I had, we come up, we, 
um, stayed at um, Ben and Feather there, and we um, talked to, I had talked to Ted, and he said, well, since, you know, we were just going to come and kind of go out on a cast, just he told us to show up kind of after the morning hunt, and then we could be there for the show, so we did that. At the show, I went out on the cast with, uh, I think it was Chad and Jay, kind of watched and learned, tried to learn, and we come back the next day and did the same thing and um, kind of just got hooked from there. I like I like Harden. I like all the people that we've met, and if I was going to move, that would be where it too <laughs> <laughs> we were i was teasing you about that on well i wasn't teasing and we'd be happy to have you here <laughs> you and everybody else that has to travel that that give me and chad somebody to hunt with during the week other besides each other yeah she she made it through a cast with me and leroy <laughs> so she, she went out with me and leroy and Bo and burley and she made it through that okay and the week of hunting with chad and vance man that'll make anybody's skin thick <laughs> <laughs> yeah vance don't know when to quit does he or was you talking about me too uh no comment almost i'll stop there <laughs> well Joni, you know we always like to get a story out of somebody uh chad unless you got a good one on Joni, then maybe we'll give Joni the chance to tell a story on somebody else i i don't think i know any good ones on Joni. she plays it safe doesn't she yeah, she she don't talk a whole lot. She's she she talks, but at the same time, she's kind of quiet too. <laughs> Joni, tell us a good one on Jeff. I, I want to know a good one on Jeff. Make sure you're in the room where he can hear you tell it too. Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to tell about Jeff. He's he's pretty he's pretty quiet too, and he's pretty self. You know he he don't mess up a whole lot. That I that oh, he let don't me let him hear anyway. you say that. Oh. Man, I hope he don't listen to this. <laughs> You'll never hear the end of that one. Yeah, he must but be out he lets the dog. me sing anyway. <laughs> he ain't um, hung the boat up in the river or nothing. Okay, I got a fishing story. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> this is so we have an area up here we um, call the the shoals, and it's just these rocks across the river it kind of makes the little waterfall and you can only get to it certain times of the year we're up there and there are people all along the edges of the river over there tied up fishing we got up there kind of later jeff and i and our boat and my dad in his so we get up there and there's nowhere else really to tie off so we Throw our anchor up on those rocks and let them drift out a little bit. And we're fishing right there in the middle, catching fish. Well, my dad was in the boat by himself and he caught his limit of catfish. So he was trolling around. I don't know if he was bass fishing or crappie fishing or whatever, but he was coming over by our boat and he got his hung up on the rocks there his trolling motor hung up on the rocks and i don't really know what happened but he went overboard <laughs> so i'm jump up and jeff's trying to catch his boat as it goes by and i don't know jeff doesn't swim jeff can save himself but he will tell you he, he can't save you <laughs> <laughs> and he was stretched across the water he had his hands on daddy's boat and his toes hooked in our boat, stretched across the water. <laughs> like a cartoon. He, yes. He gets, and everybody is just staring at us. I know. <laughs> and it's just so much going on. It's hard to tell. And it's funny now, but at the time it was kind of scary. He got daddy's boat pulled up to him and he crawled over in daddy's boat and kind of got it steadied. My dad got up on the motor got back in his boat and I turned when I seen that happen and I turned and looked and Jeff and I had five poles in the water and they were all bent over with fish on them so I was <laughs> reeling in my fish and I just throw them in the floor of the boat reeling another one and throw it in the floor boat 
And the, about the time I had the last one coming in, they both screamed at me to sit down. So I just sat down. About that time, I hit a log. I didn't realize it with all the things going on that our anchor line had broke. <laughs> so we were all floating down the river. <laughs> But the only person that got wet was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff made it through all that without getting wet. <laughs> yeah, all that. But we did catch our lemon and fish. <laughs> so was he still stretched out between the boats while you were reeling fish in? No, I think I didn't realize that they were bent over until he got in the boat. But I don't know how I was going to help him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that one was worth it. I liked that one. Was you worried about helping him too much? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I really just, it was all happening so fast. I don't remember what thoughts I had other than, oh my gosh. Well, Jeff, it's a good thing I wasn't in the boat. I'd have tickled you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now save yourself. <laughs> uh, well, Joni, we appreciate it. Um uh, Glad you came on and <clears throat> glad you listened. Looking forward to season getting going and, and seeing you more often. We're going to jump over and talk to Anna a little bit, pick her brain and ask her some of the same questions and see if we can get her to tell us one on Vance too. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to hear that story. <laughs> well, Joni, thank you very much, and you have a good evening, and if you need anything, yell at me. All right. Thank you. You. All right, see you, Jenny. All right, so we've switched over now to talk to Miss Anna Plant up in New York. Just to clear up any confusion, we have lost Chad. We're recording this on a different night to talk to Anna, or I'm recording this on a different night to talk to Anna, and Chad is on a hunting trip that would make us all jealous probably. So all you get is me this time, so it's just me and Anna. So, Anna, are you there? How are you? I'm good. Davin, how are you? Doing just fine. So we just got off the phone with Joni, and, you know, we're doing this episode uh, from a woman's perspective in the competition and even pleasure side of just handling dogs, training dogs, showing dogs, anything that you do with your dogs. Uh, But before we jump into that, why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself, um, what you do when you're not hunting your dog or showing your dog or training your dog? Well, my name is Anna Plant, and I'm recently retired, so I can kind of do what I want, when I want, and how I want. (laughs) Um, I like hunting with my feist dogs. I like fishing with my husband and children. I like bicycle riding, kayaking, gardening. You know, I like to keep busy and active, and I think that all helps, you know, when I get ready to go hunting and do my competition hunts with the feist dogs. Like to be outside, sounds like. I do. I do. <laughs> I don't blame you. I'd live I'd live out there if I could, but the weather gets in the way. That is true. And yeah, I follow a lot of those like <laughs> off the grid living Facebook pages. And mm-hmm. I'm just jealous mainly. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah. I sit there and look at the pictures and listen and watch their stories or whatever and it's like, Man, I wish that I was in a place and tough enough to do that. <laughs> Like those Life yeah, Below yeah. Zero people that show um, Discovery Channel or something in Alaska where they're, I mean, they're just out there, you know, uh, cutting yes, their own are. firewood and solar power and hunting their own food. It's awesome in theory, and I think I could do yes. it for, it'd be like a cool vacation for a couple of weeks or something, but a lifetime, that's a commitment. <laughs> it sure is. I like and my I convenience. I could do it. <laughs> right. I do. I like the creature comfort, you know. That's right. Well, then we'll just go ahead and jump into um, the podcast here, the interview here. Why don't you start by telling us just how long you've been hunting with dogs? Well, I started as a young teenager, young adult with my dad, and he had hounds. He had blue ticks, black and tans, red bones, never had a plot, didn't like the brindle kind of dog. We coon hunted with them. And then I think it was like two, well, early 2000s, we did get into uh, the cur dogs for squirrel hunting, but we didn't really know enough to know about 
what to do with them to make it be successful. So that was short-lived. And then 2018, 2019, I think it was, um, we got involved with, my husband was getting ready to retire, and we were like, let's get squirrel dogs. Let's try it again and see. And so, you know, life kind of happens, and, you know, I always say that God has smiled on us, and he's put the right people in the right places in our lives. And so... Um, we got some dogs, and then we had some puppies, and then I had a cur dog. But then we decided that we wanted to go with the feist. We wanted, if we're going to have squirrel dogs, we didn't want to have curs and feist. So we chose to um, stick with the feist dogs. And it's been fun and enjoyable, you know, pleasure hunt and competition hunting. So it's something that I'm glad that we got involved in. Absolutely. Well, to back you up just a little bit, because I, I'm sure that I'm not the only one. There's probably plenty of listeners on this show, too, that have heard your husband Vance's interview um, on Tree Talking Time with Ben. So one thing that I had here I wanted to ask you about was you actually met Vance at a coon dog event, right? I did. And I did. He um, mentioned a bench show lunch bet. Yes. So, which... This is a moment when I kind of wish Chad was here to help um, maybe get a jab in. <laughs> but I told Chad, I said, you know, let's hear Anna's side of this bench show bet because, you know, Ben was interviewing Vance and we got Vance's side on record, but there could be more to it that he didn't, that he omitted. <laughs> uh, well, my dad had hounds, like I said, and. Um, the only thing that they really had in common was they all ran trash. <laughs> and so Anna, as a young lady, decided, well, I'd had enough of that chasing those dogs wee hours of the night, two, three o'clock in the morning. You know, we didn't have the telemetry that we have now. So it was a shirt left on the ground, and then you go back the next day to hopefully find your dog. You know, so yeah. I was like, enough of this. I want my own dog. So our friend had a litter of blue ticks. So I got me a blue tick puppy. And, you know, I always say young and dumb. I didn't know any more than my father, but I was convinced that I could do better. <laughs> so he graciously dragged me around the Northeast to all these shows. And I had a flat-footed, web-footed blue tick hound. But... I was going to do something with her besides run trash. So I'm like, I'll try my hand here at uh, benching a dog. So we'd go, and she wasn't going to win anything, but there was this really cute guy that showed up week <laughs> after week at these hunts, and it was like he only knew how bad. I, I couldn't beat him. We were in different classes. He had a male, and I had a female. Then one Saturday, April, we were standing there waiting for the show to start, and he winks at me, and he says, if I win today, I'll let you buy me lunch. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, I'm buying lunch because there ain't no way I'm winning, <laughs> not with a flat-footed duck-billed um, foot dog, you know? So lo and behold, he um, he won, and we went for pizza, and he did buy lunch. I didn't have to. He was a gentleman. That's what and I wanted to ask. <laughs> yes, he, he did buy lunch, and he was a gentleman. And um, we dated for four years, and we've been married for 31 years. And I awesome. always tease him. I said, you know what? I couldn't beat you, so I joined you. <laughs> joined you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, so, a, that's a long time, too. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, his story is good, um, but it was like I knew I could never beat him, but I was like I was going to try, but, you know, my dad, God love him, he graciously dragged me around, you know, to show this flat-footed blue tick <laughs> that wasn't going to win, but I was like I was determined, but I ended up with a husband, not a bench show <laughs> champion. Still trying to figure out if you won, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I won. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, what took you away from um, the hounds then? When you had you mentioned that um, you and Vance had 
cur uh, curs and feist at the same time so and you know we we love the cur dogs as much as we do the feist dogs here at kennel confidential but um since you are a tree and feist hunter what was the deciding factor there well when we first decided we actually sat down and made a list of all the breeds that we liked for squirrel hunting and then we decided to rate them how we like them which for color whatever you know confirmation hunting ability and lo and behold our lists were pretty darn close to each other's and we didn't look at each other's lists so then we were like where are we going to find a dog so we started going on facebook and we were looking at the different groups and such and i found a puppy that i wanted it was I believe it was a feist. I was trying to find a dog hauler. Well, being inexperienced, you know, um, we didn't have all the resources, so we're trying to fumble through this, right? Before I could get a dog hauler lined up, I called the guy back. He had sold the puppy, and it was the last one. I was like, well, damn, now what? (laughs) So somehow, and I don't remember... We found this cur puppy, and it was Damon Woolrich up in Illinois. And my husband's like, please, don't sell that dog before we get a dog hauler. And he told them the backstory. So we got the cur dog here. She was one heck of a tree dog. And then we ended up, we did like the barger, so we bought the puppy, Robber. Then we were like, we don't want to have curs and feist because then it's like, how do you go to competition, you know, because not everybody has both. So we made the decision that we were going to stick with the feist, but it's trial and error, right? I mean, it's like, why own a dog if you're not happy with it or if it's not doing what you want it to do? Right. You know, and it's also a learning curve because the feists are different than hounds. What do you and think? You don't realize that. What was the biggest difference that you learned um, just in hunting style between the feist and the curs? The cur dog that we had, she was like 14 months old. So she was, you know, started. She was tight, tough tree dog. I think that was the biggest thing at first because we had puppies at that time. We had puppies and we had the cur. And the size, it was like she was much bigger than the feist. I mean, and then it's like you realize you can do just as much with the little dogs as you can the big dogs. And it's like part of the reason I didn't like the hounds was it's not very much fun to get dragged through the woods with a big old hound. So the size was a big factor for me. I wanted a small dog. I think these guys are a lot smarter than hounds and they mine better. You can, they're training, they train easier. Yeah, that was one thing that I, when I chose Feist, which is the only thing I've had, that's my entire background, short background, but uh, that the size was the big thing to me. You know, my in-laws tried to offer me some walker puppies and then some walker mm-hmm. cross puppies, and I told them that I just didn't see any need in packing an 80, 90-pound dog to the woods to chase a squirrel up a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. If I was going after a big game, uh, you know, bears or cats or something that might eat me, then yeah, I want a bigger <laughs> a bigger dog, a bigger pack. But, you know, for for what I was doing with it, that I was really similar to the the size of the feist. And, you know, intelligence-wise, I've been really impressed with both pups that I've had just compared to, you know, the only thing I can compare them to is just, you know, house dogs and stuff that I've trained growing up, but they're, they are, um, I would put their intelligence pretty high up there, in my opinion, as far as trainability uh, and eager to please. The Feist is pretty eager to please to me too. Well, so, you know, Feist can come in many colors and sizes. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you just speaking of this, since we're on the topic of the size of dogs, if you could build your dog, your ideal dog, what color and size would that be? I like the red dogs. I hunt primarily Sally, and I have a pup out of her and Robber of their first litter, and she's more Sally's color. And I like that color, but right now I'm in love with Sally and my Vanna, so I How like that color. What's their height? Do you know? Have you ever met their them? height? Sally, Sally's probably like sixteen inches and twenty six pounds, 
and Vanna's probably a hair taller than her, and she's built like Robert, a thin, like, lean built. She's got the longer legs like Robert for confirmation, where Sally's got the shorter, stockier legs. Mm -hmm. So she's a shorter build. Sally's a little more compact. I got you. And y'all just got a new pup from Michigan, I believe, right? We did from Alex Huey in Michigan. Black and tan. So how many are in y'all's pack at the moment then as far as your competition dogs? Well, right now we have Sally and Robert as far as competing. And then we're puppy poor right now. Because <laughs> we actually have another one coming from Doug Marlowe. So... So when that one comes, we'll have three puppies. I almost feel like 2018 all over again. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get there. We'll so, get there. So, which Robert's had some quite a bit of success. Yes, he has. He's the best in the pack as far as the uh, competition hunting goes, would you say? Well, there's a debate about that in this house. Oh, good. Let's hear it. That's what I. That was kind of where I was going to try to lead you anyway. So, what's the debate? Well, fans things. Well, to be fair, um, of course we each think that our dog is better, right? Sure. But when Vance bought Sally, he was the one that put her titles primarily on her because he was hunting her. Because she was an adult dog and broke, you know, where Robert was the younger dog. You know, he was six months old, I think, when we got him. He has come a long ways. And we have, like, practice hunts. And I did beat him one day, and it felt really good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, right? Good, just fair, you know, just good, clean competition, you know. But... Um, I'll try to get, if we're doing a practice hunt, I'll try to jump on him and get the first tree, you know. But Sally will probably tree more closer than he does. He'll range out farther than Sally. How deep does so, Sally get? What would you say her average is? Two, two, three hundred. I mean, I've had her tree four trees and six trees recently in two, less than 250 feet from the truck. Wow. You know, in a half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Like the squirrels are moving like crazy. Yeah. She'll, she'll tree close and fast. Which where is. Where Robert um, will go out a little bit farther. Yeah. I think close, as long as the squirrels are down and moving good, you know, with an accurate dog, I think I like close and fast better in the competition set. I do too. I do too. So how long have you competition hunting your dogs? Then? Did you say 2018 is when y'all got into it? We did, and I was uh, still working then. I just retired this January, so Vance was doing most of it. I would say, well, our great governor during COVID locked our state down, and I wasn't able to get out. So I think October of 2021 was the first time that I was able to, um, I was able to go down to camp. I hunted some in 2022, but Sally got Lyme disease. So that set her back. And then um, I had the disadvantage of not being able to hear. I recently got hearing aids. So 2023, fast forward, I had a little bit of success. I'm feeling a little more confident and I've learned my dogs. I've learned my rules. So I'm looking forward to this fall and going forward with sally because she's doing better now and um i can hear her and i can call her and i've i've learned the rules i've had some lessons along the way so i'm i, I think it just takes time to get confident enough to call your dog sooner than later and the more you hunt the better you know your dog the more successful you're going to be hopefully you know, every dog has its day, right? Right. I run a stopwatch even when I'm shooting the squirrels by myself. <laughs> I, still, I, I still like to run the stopwatch and, you know, make sure that I go through all the steps, even if I'm out there for pleasure. I do, too. And I think it keeps you honest. Right. Well, so y'all do quite a bit of traveling, being that you're in New York. Yes, we do. And when you mentioned camp and you're actually referring to y'all's place, y'all loved West Kentucky so much you bought a place. We did. <laughs> yes, we did. In 2020, we went down 
together on a vacation and then Vance went back and I went back and it was like there is just a draw to that area I mean it's really nice the people are friendly the hunting is great I went down there before the world hunt last year and I hunted at least three to five times a week and I like it there's a lot of good hunting and there's some hunting around our camp you know I can take Sally there and a young dog because there's plenty of woods there to hunt, and when you have a close-range dog, you don't have to worry about it. Although, one day, she went like 600 yards and way down. I was like, damn, girl. <laughs> she couldn't find anything, so she went and found There was a squirrel in her tree when I got there, but it was like, that was a hey, long walk. Yeah, I like that. I will take that yeah. as long as she stayed busy till she found something. We do know that, or you and I know, I guess we should tell everybody else that you are a member of the UTFA. Um, aside yeah. from the United Tree and Fight Association, are you a member of any other clubs or organizations? Um, no, not at the moment. I think we're going to be joining the UMFA to support them. So do you consider being a member of, you know, is actually going through the process and joining, um, is that advantageous, do you believe? I do. I mean, there's a lot of benefits, but it's not always what you can get from an organization. It's what you can offer to the organization. You know, I go down there and I say, hey, what needs to be done? You know, and I'll clean the kitchen, the bathrooms. I'll take entries. I think the board members decided that it was time to branch out a little bit. And like Joni, myself, and... Some I don't remember who else, but some of us that weren't board members that were hunting, it was time for us to take a cast. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, do I know enough? And I think that, I don't want to say forces, but for the lack of a better word, it makes you learn the rules you ask more questions because now you're responsible for the cast. Sure. Then you got your three stopwatches, you know, your card, your pencil, you know, and your laser pointer. And it's like, it's a whole different ball of game. You know, it's like, now I'm in charge and I got to listen for everybody's dogs and I got to keep the timer on everybody's dogs, you know? So I think, and then if the bathrooms need to be cleaned or, you know, I didn't get a chance. I, I wasn't the hunt director, but I think it's really good that, you know, it's what can I offer to the organization, not what I necessarily get out of it. Right. Yeah. And I really like that point in Kentucky, as far as I know, you know, we don't really have, we're not one of the States where the legislation is really breathing down our neck. Um, but I feel like without clubs and organizations, you know, that's the that's really the best way to protect and support what we all love to do so much. You know, so, so yeah, I do like your point about what you can give. You know, to me one of the, the biggest advantages is the people, you know, the friends you make especially, but also just being able to if if Kentucky becomes one of those states and I pray they never do at least you've got a group of like-minded people. You have a place to go. You've got a, a, a pool to get people from um, and vol yes. you know, volunteers. But Definitely. And I think we have a group, a good group of people that truly want to do what's best for the sport. So sticking on the club and the competition side, would you say that you prefer a bench show or a cast? <laughs> that one stop. I like You do a lot of showing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Um the little um pup that I have out of Sally and Robert, she's a dog that wants to please you. And I have a, a bench show trainer now at home to teach me. So um I wanted to really try to be successful with this dog so i started benching her probably three four months old just getting her to stand and then by six months i'd go out and like the dog just wanted to please you like she was so easy to bench and she got up on her toes and she'd stand there and actually sometimes she'd just close her eyes and stand there like as long as i asked her to but 
I also like a good competition hunt. You know, I like to go out and see what I've done with my dog Sally, you know, practicing hunting her to see how good she can get in a different place, in a different setting with different dogs and different conditions, you know, because we're probably 20, 30 degrees cooler here than it is there in Kentucky, you know, so that's why we usually go down a bit early for our dogs to acclimate, you know, but it's a different hunt every time, right? A different place, different conditions. So I, I don't know if I had to pick one or the other. Um, I'm probably a little more confident in the, um, hunting in a cast now. Nervous, like everybody, you're up there and everybody's staring at you, you know, and like you even have different conditions for bench shows. Like I was showing Ace, he was out of the first litter, um, Sophie and Robert, and we were at um, Twin Lakes. And that dog would stand for five minutes. I'd practice with him every day. Well, I turned him around. The wind blew in his face, and he cowered down. I'm like, well, that's the end of that show. Yeah. You know, there's conditions in both, I think. But I think I would, I like the competition hunting the best right now. Well, if I had to have predicted your answer, I think I would have predicted bench show. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think I would. You, know, I you know. stay pretty busy on the bench, and then you've got the whole story, too, about um, meeting. Yeah, you got married at a bench show, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, in your experience in the dog world, uh, which goes back to your childhood, sounds like, how do you feel like the reception has been as a lady in the sport? I think that it's probably well more well recepted now. I think that the men like to see the women competing. Um, I didn't really think about it too much when I was younger, you know? I was just having fun, you know? I wasn't really, I guess I didn't have the expectations of my dogs then as much as I do now. Because I certainly didn't put the time into benching my flat-footed blue tick <laughs> as much as I do my dogs now. I think that it's well recepted, you know, and I think they like to see the ladies involved. I would personally like to see more women get involved, you know. I mean, if some of you guys brought your wives and, I mean, who doesn't like to go for a walk, right? So now you're just adding a dog in the woods, you know, and it's a nice walk with the dogs. Anybody can do it. Um, I would like to see more women, but I think the men are well recepted you know they see you they know you're going to compete with them and um we have fun you know i think it's i think i pay a little more attention to it now i think you see not to stereotype people but i think you tend to see more women that show and i think that women probably put a little more time into the practice and getting ready and take it a little more serious i mean my husband was and is, a, you know, a true shore showman. You know, he does put a lot of time in it. It's not, I think it's more of a woman's sport. I hope I don't get scrutinized for that comment too much. But <laughs> it's all right. I We're open more, to all opinions. <laughs> I think more women tend to show. I would, it could be because of the confidence, you know. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, and to me, the show, you know, it always falls between the morning and afternoon cast. And if you're sitting around the clubhouse eating a hot dog or doing nothing anyway, why yeah. not you know why not try might as well i feel like um right you're which there, i'm you know i'm competitive i have a competitive spirit anyway i, I would race my dog against yours you know <laughs> if we <laughs> we've tie, done that right right yeah tie high to the back of the four-wheeler and let's just see whose is the fastest you know if i'm killing time between hunts anyway i'm as, and i'm as competitive as i am i might as well do something so i might right. as well show my dog against yours and i you know i'm not saying i'm gonna beat you i'm just gonna you know kill 30 minutes <laughs> and have right. fun while i do it even if i lose i'm gonna have a good time losing yes uh well so have you ever had any kind of negative interaction at a hunt not a negative interaction but um some casts that i've hunted on let's put it this way they were lessons learned it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't an altercation it wasn't no oh, right okay. no no it was just like it was a lesson, like how things were handled in a cast and um, the rules and 
anybody that knows me probably knows that I'm by the book. I am an accountant by nature, so I'm a matter of factly person. And I think that that may have made me a better competition hunter because it, again, it made me go back and reread the rules and know them better and ask questions and do practice hunts. So I would say it was a lesson learned and not a negative. It was, it upset me at the time. Right. Constructive criticism, so, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I took, try to take it as a positive outcome and try to learn the rules better, work on the rules. So you got to learn your lessons and apply it and move on. So if there's a lady out there listening that are maybe just on the fence about, even on the pleasure side, just about getting involved in general, what would be the best piece of advice you think you could give to that lady to get her off the fence and get her involved? I would say go with somebody that has some knowledge and experience and a dog that's, you know, at least treeing squirrels because it's frustrating to have a dog and not know what to do with it spectate would be the first thing if you want to learn how to you know squirrel hunt or you're thinking about competition hunting um go with somebody that has the knowledge and the experience yeah and you know know, that which i think that's good advice and to say you know to spectate first i think that's that's a really good piece of advice um you may go out to a, a hunt and realize you don't like the way that feist hunts or you don't like the way the feist hunts in general or you don't like the way the cur or, or the the hound you don't like the way any of them are hunting you know so spectating i think that's a good piece of advice um again and then having somebody with knowledge you know that to me that falls back on the club you know that's a big advantage of, of joining any organization is the club is that's going to be your hub that's your google you know <laughs> yes uh, yes cause so yeah i think that's good all- advice Thank you. They're going to have, you know, all walks of life. You know, I mean, think about our club. They've been hunting for a really long time. They have a lot of experience under their belt, and they're good resources. And willing to help. You know, I I think we've said that. Yes. And I don't know, sometimes these shows run together, so it might even have been on Joni's call. I really don't know. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But uh, I haven't met anybody that just, you know, stands in the corner and gives you a dirty look. You know, that uh, if, if you've got a question or want to talk to somebody everybody's really pretty open and willing to help yes definitely one thing that at the end of the show it's and it's usually up to chad but since we don't have him since he's traveling back from that terrible hunting vacation he was on i'm sure it was awful i know i feel so bad for him yeah um Chad always tries to get a story out of somebody, Um, and I will say that Joni told one on, well, she kind of told one on Jeff a little bit, Uh, but we were hoping that maybe, especially being married to him for 31 years, we could talk you out of a really good Vance story. Well, my funny story would be how we met. Well, one of my favorite stories was when we got Robert, and um, we were hunting here on our property and um, he had, he was treating really pretty good. And he was, the squirrel is up in this big old pine tree. And um, Vance shot up in the tree and it came around and it got there. I, it was my first successful kill of a squirrel. I had blasted this squirrel out of the tree and I actually was successful. It come flying down, it hit the ground, the dog got it. It was like, wow, I finally put this all together. <laughs> and it was it was like And it was Robert you did was, that with? It was Robert that I did that with. So that was pretty exciting. But because, uh, now he has and I tease him about this, so this might be good. Um this last litter of puppies, we kept the male puppy. <laughs> And um, our grandson was like, we have to tell him ahead of time, like, hey, we'll be going away for about a month. And he goes, well, you will be back on November 4th, right? Well, we all know what November 4th is when he's asking about it. That's his birthday. (laughs) So we're like, yeah, we should be back by then. He goes, well, I already know what I want. I want a puppy. Well, we had that male puppy left. So he claimed him and he says, well... Uh. We all know Vance likes red bones, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this one is not, it's a little bit redder than Sally, but it's not so much the color. 
we're always teasing each other. And so I go out and I feed the dogs. He feeds the dogs. We take turns, you know, depending on who's hunting and who's doing what. I came in the house one day and I go, you know, that really nice looking pup you got out there. He goes, yeah. And I go, it's got prick ears. He goes, are you kidding me? <laughs> he goes, it didn't yesterday. And I go, it he goes, you're kidding me, right? You're just telling me that to aggravate me. I go, no. <laughs> I said, go on out there right now. I said, you're going to see a prick-eared dog. So I teased him. I said, you got the prettiest barger prick-eared dog you're ever going to see this litter. <laughs> uh, Vance is not a fan of the prick ears, huh? No, he's not. And the guys tease him. That like... must come out of his coon dog days. <laughs> no, he's not a fan of the prick ears. But now we have a um, prick-eared barger cross cedarwood dog and um he's like oh, damn he goes that happens overnight <laughs> and it did it basically did the dog's ears were kind of laying down, oh so you weren't you know? teasing him it really they really no, are standing it up. really is <laughs> that's really even better is. i like that better yeah yeah so, i thought yeah, like he good. just went out there to look and realized they were still buttoned over or something <laughs> <laughs> well all right anna um I appreciate it. I know I can fix, speak for Chad and say that we're happy you came on. Um, Thank you. Glad, I'm glad to, I did too. Yeah, glad to have done it. Glad to get your perspective. Look forward to seeing you. Uh, you are getting ready to travel back down this way soon, aren't you? We are. We'll be back down sometime in October. 